whichever way you call it, ground beef or hamburger, we love a good ground beef recipe. And I have four quick and easy ground beef recipes your family will love. Hey friends, I'm Susan and welcome to my home. Whether it's warm or cold, ground beef recipes are always a staple in our house, just like they are in yours. And I tell you what, I have probably picked four of the best ground beef recipes you will try. Simple and easy and so tasty. Oh my gosh, you will love them. So come on, let's get our ponytails up and let's get to cooking some ground beef recipes. Hamburger, ground beef, whichever way you want to call it, it's all good. And we're going to make some sheet pan tacos tonight. I have got a small sheet pan because Danny and I, you know, don't need a whole lot. <laughs> I've got some of these burritos, some Mexican cheese, taco seasoning, taco sauce, some red and green. I've got the sour cream in the fridge and we'll get out here in a minute and I just made some taco meat which is one pound of hamburger meat with some taco seasoning in it so it's about time to put this together I'm waiting for the oven to get to 350 that way we can get everything in and get it cooking and I have got this small sheet pan um, they use a large sheet pan in one of the um, things that I looked at about this and I'm just gonna put probably about three of these burritos on the sheet pan and overlap them. Let's see if I can get them to where they overlap pretty. Because this is unusual, but you know me. I love tacos and I love unusual. So the next thing is to put the hamburger meat down. And I'm going to go ahead and spread the hamburger meat on the taco shells and pretty much cover the majority of the bottom of this shell right here. It's in the... Um, sheet pan. Now I've got the meat pretty well spread out. As you can see I can flip the shells over on themselves and it'll work really well. I am going to go ahead and put a little bit of taco sauce on the meat in here. If you want to do the full nine yards with the beans and stuff like Danny loves, you can. But it's a Tuesday and I am tired from work and I am cooking. Quick, quick, easy meal. Of course, we like a little bit of spicy on ours. Some green, some red. And now I am going to put a little bit of onion on it. I, I didn't have that in the lineup earlier, but I think I want a little bit of oniony goodness on the hamburger meat. Because y'all know we love us some onion. Now, if you don't like the onion, don't put it on. It's real simple. I am going to go ahead and put a little bit of cheese in the middle. That'll help this kind of hold together when it melts. And now that I've got all the cheese inside, I am going to basically fold the, the um, burritos into the middle. And it's going to make a little triangle. If you use a square pan and you do more, it makes more of a square. This one is going to be more of a triangle, which is fine. It's just Danny and I. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in the oven and let this cook for about 10 minutes. Bring it out. Put some more cheese on top. And then I'll show you what it looks like. This has been 10 minutes. The cheese is starting to really melt really good on the inside. I'm going to go ahead and put some cheese on the outside of this and get that melted up. Now I'm going to go ahead and put this back in the oven for about five minutes, I think. See how the cheese melts on it? And then get it out and it'll be ready to eat. And I put this in the oven for another five minutes and let it just melt down. You can make the cheese as dark, as brown, as whatever it is you like. You know, Danny and I could care less if it was nicely browned up. As long as it's melted and it's gooey, it's ready to be divided up and put on a plate. And I'm basically using a pizza wheel to kind of cut my way around and cut these apart. Need that one cut apart. Okay. Because it's a square, it's I mean a triangle, it's a little bit harder to deal with. Now let me get these on the plate. And look how beautiful this is. I'm gonna go ahead and 
Make a little spot in the middle for some sour cream. There we go. Now I've got these all cut up and spread around. I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of sour cream in the middle. I do not have any of my squeezable sour cream. I'm using the container. But look at that. That is so absolutely adorable. And it's what's for supper tonight. And tonight we're gonna make some creamy hamburger soup. I've got some Italian seasoning, some diced tomatoes, some traditional spaghetti sauce, a block of cream cheese, some onions, dill, penne pasta, this is chicken bone broth, and of course, the hamburger meat that I'm about to brown up in the big Dutch oven pot. So let me go ahead and get this started, and then we'll go to the rest of this and add it in. And the hamburger meat has been browned, and I have drained it. I'm going to go ahead and add in one chopped onion. It says purple onion. You know me. It's a Vidalia onion. That's the only kind I have in the house. That's what we like. This salt and for just a minute, and I'm going to go ahead and add in a little bit of salt and pepper. And I'm going to go ahead and add in the Italian seasoning. I didn't have minced garlic in the lineup earlier, but I've got three teaspoons of minced garlic going in. I'm going to go ahead and stir this around. I went ahead and let the onions uh, sweat down just a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and add in the can of spaghetti sauce, the can of diced tomatoes, and the chicken broth. And now that I've added all that in, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a quick stir. And I'm gonna let this cook on a medium for about 10 minutes, and then we'll add the last two ingredients. And this got up to a rolling boil. I've turned it down just a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and add in two cups of penne pasta. And yes, I'm measuring this time so I don't overfill. <laughs> Although I think the amount of pasta said two cups. Um, yeah, I'm wondering if that's how much I should have put in, but that's okay. It was calling for small shells, and y'all know penne is my favorite. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in. It does call for a fourth of a cup of fresh basil chopped. I'm just going to put a little smidgen of the basil paste in there. Not much, because it does have a very big flavor to it. Go ahead and do this. Mm, smelling good. I'm going to go ahead and let this boil for five minutes, and then we'll add the cream cheese, and we'll be almost through. And this has been boiling about three to four minutes. I'm going to go ahead and add in the cream cheese. I have basically put it into little blocks. That way it will divide up and melt a little bit easier. I'm going to go ahead and let this cook for about another two to three minutes until the cream cheese completely melts and then we'll be ready to eat. It is boiling nicely. All the cheese is melted. Look at that. Oh, this is going to be some good soup. Let's go ahead and get it into a bowl so we can eat. And here we go. Creamy cheeseburger, or hamburger soup that is. I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of sour cream in the middle. And of course, a little bit of Mexican cheese. Because, you know, Mexican cheese goes great with everything. I'm there you go. Creamy hamburger soup, and it's what's for supper tonight. And tonight we're going to do something quick. Simple, easy, and if you've never done this or had one of these, you don't realize how quick and easy this meal it really is. I'm going to do it a little different, though. I am going to make some taco smash burgers on the tortilla. Taco seasoning, a little bit of onion, sour cream, taco sauce, the green, the red, and something new that I've fallen in love with, guys, poblano sauce. That is starting to be my new green instead of the regular green, which is jalapeno. So, and of course some cheese. We're going to make them up like tacos, but they're going to be smash, burger, tacos, whatever you want to call them. But let's go ahead and get started mixing some taco seasoning in. And of course, just like I do with my tacos, I'm doing this with the hamburger meat. I'm going to put some taco seasoning on it, cover it nicely, 
and then mix it all together. Yes, I'm using my hands, guys. They're clean. Get all that taco seasoning in there. I may need a little bit more taco seasoning. Pop a little bit more in there. Okay, that's good. That, this is a pound of hamburger, and I put probably about one sleeve of the taco seasoning, which is going to get this a amazingly awesome flavor. Not your regular burger. It's a taco burger. It's a taco smash burger. So, let's get it on the little tortilla. And I'm going to go ahead and show you how to make one of these. Basically, you're going to get a little hamburger, a handful, excuse me, of the burger meat and push it all the way out to the sides. And as you see, it's all out to all the edges. What I'm gonna do is, I've heated this pan up, it's nice and warm. I'm gonna go ahead and put this hamburger side down, I don't know if you can hear it sizzling. And that's gonna cook for probably about two to three minutes. You'll just keep kind of checking on it. And it'll be fine. It'll, it'll stay on the shell and not a problem. But it'll be quick. And I'm going to go ahead and make a couple more real quick so I can toss them back and forth. And I just let it cook for about a minute. And you can see it's already getting there. And I've just flipped it over. What's going to happen is all the juices that are in this hamburger are going to cook the bottom side of the tortilla. I've got it on probably about a medium, medium low. I don't want to cook too fast. But I do want the bottom to get nice and crispy. And I got the tortilla side nice and browned up. I've got the hamburger back on there because it still had a little bit of red on it. And I don't want that. But, I mean, it's taken all of five minutes maybe so far. And I think it's about ready to come off. Look at that. Listen to that. I think it's time to take it off the heat. Now I'm going to make this kind of like I would a taco. I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of taco seasoning on it. And this is going to be Danny's. One of Danny's. He's going to have two. Because he loves him some tacos. I'm going to put a little bit of onion on it. Just a little bit. you got to have a little onion. I should have... I, well, no, I couldn't really put it in the meat because I'm not cooking the meat like I normally do. But there you go. A little bit of onion. A little bit of red. And a little bit of green. And y'all know how I do with my quesadillas. I'm going to fold it in half. But first, I got to put on some cheese. All right. I'm going to go ahead and fold this over. It is nice and crispy. Ooh, that is looking really good. I did need to put some sour cream on it, though. So let me go ahead and do that real quick. There we go. All right. Let me get another one for Danny, and then we'll be ready to eat. And how do you know whenever this is about done? Look how that is fluffing up right there. That is telling me that it is about to the point we need to take it off and eat it. And I got the second one. Really crispy. <laughs> He's going to have fun with that one. And I add a little bit of sour cream to dip them into. And smash burger tacos. They're what's for supper tonight. And I am ready for a quick meal tonight. And this... Sounded unusual, and then I thought, I don't really want to start the oven up. I'm just going to make it in one pot into a one-part version. You can. It says it in the instructions, which is pretty neat. So, I've got some diced tomatoes, some whole corn that's been drained, a can of my thick and chunky manwich sauce. I love that stuff. We had some elbow macaroni left over. I'm going to go ahead and use it, because y'all know I'm using up what's in the pantry to get it out of here. That way I can put more good stuff in here. Got some onion, sharp cheddar, Velveeta cheese, and some bone broth, chicken bone broth that I made uh, the other week and had it in the freezer and I defrosted it. So now, the star of the show, of course, is the hamburger meat that's in there starting to brown up. Let me get this browned up and then we'll start adding all the other stuff. Now I've got the ground beef just about completely cooked up. I don't know if you can see it that great. I'm going to go ahead and add in the onions and get those going on. I'm going to let this cook for, this is about five minutes. It probably don't need five minutes. I've cut them pretty small. I'm going to do about three to four minutes, and then we'll see where it's at and get things going on. 
Now I went ahead and let this cook a little bit. I have drained the fat. I'm gonna go ahead and add in the manwich sauce, the diced tomatoes, and the chicken broth. Now I'm gonna go ahead and stir all this together. This is definitely gonna be interesting. Like I said, new recipe, we're trying it. It looked interesting and y'all know I like unusual food. So let me go ahead and let this come to a gentle boil and then we'll add the pasta. And now it's on a light rolling bowl. I'm gonna go ahead and add the, pop, the pasta into this. Hopefully this won't get too big. I know this is jumbo pasta, but I was supposed to use farfalle and I don't like farfalle, plus I don't have any. So I got what I had so I could go ahead and get it used up. And this was it. All right. Let me go ahead and let this boil gently for just a little bit. And then we'll come back and we'll add the rest of the ingredients. And I'm gonna go ahead and add the corn in. I said one cup, mm, that's probably a little bit more than one cup, but that's okay. We need some vegetables in this. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this back on. A simmer for about five minutes and then we'll be ready to add the cheese and like I said I'm not gonna cook it in the oven I'm gonna just keep it in the pot that way it'll be nice and cheesy and look how much that <laughs> the noodles came up I probably put too many noodles but that's okay the next thing I'm gonna add is the Velveeta cheese I cut them up into small little pieces that way they could melt down it called for eight ounces. I did two slices. That's what I normally do. And, you know, and uh, all my other stuff. So that's what I did. I know it'll get it nice and cheesy. So it also calls for some regular cheddar. Which I do have a little bit of sharp cheddar. I need to finish adding up. I mean, uh, using up. So we've got that in. I'm going to go ahead and stir this around. And then once this all gets melted in, it'll be time to eat. It's not necessarily a casserole, because I made it in the pan, but it's cheesy, sloppy joe, one pan. <laughs> I don't know what to call it, but hopefully it's good, because it's smelling pretty good right now. And here you go. I probably did put a little bit too much noodles in it, but it's looking really good. So we're going to try it and see what we think, because it looks like... It's supper, and it's time to eat. And here you go. It is the Sloppy Joe casserole. That's not made into a casserole. It is just what we're having for supper. And it's what's for supper tonight. Weren't those ground beef recipes so easy and so good? You know, I always link the recipes down in the description so you can go to it and print it out if you're like me and love a printed out recipe. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and don't forget to press that little button down below and subscribe so you don't miss any of the fun and good food. And if you enjoyed this video, you'll also enjoy this video right here. So until next time, see you then.